So Mariner Alternatives, Tagore Aqua Racer, to the Black Bay, Omega Seamaster 300M. Cool, we can go home now. Hi everyone and welcome to Chaluso and today we're going to be talking about three Rolex Submariner alternatives that aren't your usual Aqua Racer, Black Bay, Omega Seamaster 300, etc. You know, there's a million videos out there, we'll probably tell you all of those three, if not two out of those three, but today I'm talking about a few different ones to the ones that you usually come across. And one of the criteria that I used for this list was that I'm actually gonna incorporate the pre-owned price or the gray market price of the Submariner because the reality is it's so hard to get one at retail. And when you consider that a Rolex Submariner can run you anywhere from 8,500 US up to 15,000 US, you can have a lot of fun with that and with a lot more interesting watches than your usual run of the mill alternatives. So let's get started. First off, a quick recap of the Submariner date as it's officially known, because technically the no date version is just the Submariner. It was released in 2010. It is still a current production model. It's a 40 millimeter case, 12.7 millimeters thick. So one of the thinnest dive watches out there has a 904L oyster steel case, cerachrome ceramic bezel, 300 meters water resistance. On the inside, you have the Rolex Caliber 3135, originally found in the 16610, and that was released in 1988. However, in the current model, they have also added the Parachrome Hairspring. It's still cost certified, still a superlative chronometer, 48 hour power reserve, automatic watch with a date. And that comes in at a retail price, if you can get it, of 8,950 US at 2020 prices. Meanwhile, on the pre-owned market, you're looking at about 8,500 up to 15,000 US dollars. So there's a lot of range to play with, and that is of course down to the steel Rolex hype. But let's say you want something other than that. What can you look to? Well, first on the list is a new watch for last year, and that is the Glasute Original CQ Panorama Date. Now there are cheaper variants of it, but this is a German watch, and one of the key highlights of German watchmaking, you'll find a lot in Glasute Original, you'll find it in Lange und Söhne, and that's the big date. So that's where you have two discs showing the date as opposed to just one. It doesn't really serve any extra use except for it makes the date a little bit bigger. This 43.2 millimeter German watch measures 15.6 millimeters thick. So it is quite a fair bit thicker than the Submariner, but you get a lot more on the inside. The Glasuto Original Manufacturer Caliber 36-13 has 100 hours of power reserve, so it eclipses the Rolex. You can easily wear this watch over the weekend, have pretty much the whole week ahead of you, and then put it back on and not have to reset the date. So a big advantage on a technical front and still has a silicon hairspring as well. Automatic, of course. It's a great, great watch and beautifully decorated. And you can actually see that nice gold rotor with the GG design. So it's a fantastic alternative to the plain case back Submariner. And it is still 300 meters water resistant, ceramic bezel, steel construction, and a really nice sort of vintage look. And the fact of the matter is, is that Glossuto Original is a brand that not everyone knows. It's kind of, you have to know about it to know it. And the CQ is a great representation of their sort of vintage watches. It's got that vintage look with the Arabic numerals, nice chunky dial, lots of Luminova. And if you can get over the thickness and the size, then you've got a great watch on your hands. So at retail, it sells for about 12,000 euros. That works out to about 13,600 US. So it is a lot more expensive than the Submariner's retail price. But when you look at the gray market, it's right between that range of 8,500 to 15,000. And then when you look at the pre-owned market for this watch, you can get one for as little as 9,000 US. So much closer to the Submariner's retail, and that ranges up to 11,000 US. So it does depreciate a little bit, but this is a watch that just came out last year. If you got one today, 1st of February, 2020, you'd still have it under warranty. It'd still be a very new watch. The original owner would have already lost the original value. And when you look at that level of depreciation, the upper cap of the used price is at 11,000. At a retail of about 13, 13, 5, you can easily negotiate that and get a discount or get some additional value when you purchase your watch, better rep with your AD, whatever it may be. So it makes for a great value proposition as well. And getting a watch that's a little bit different and off the beaten path, I highly doubt you'll see someone else with the same watch. And it's one of the few dive watches that has a big date. 
So what's not to love? Next on the list is one of my personal favorites and that is the Blanc Pain 50 Fathoms Bathyscaphe on a bracelet. I tried on one of these in Hong Kong airport and it is a beast. The bracelet is like, it's like it's made out of a chain. It looks so, so cool and industrial, totally different to anything you'd find. And it's a really, really nice way to get a 300 meter diver from high horology without any sort of compromise in terms of the utility. It's still ceramic bezel, still made of steel, still 300 meter water resistant. And on the inside, you get a much more advanced movement than what you would find on the Rolex. The Blanc Pain Caliber 1315 is of course a manufacturer caliber made by Frédéric Piguet, which is now known as Manufacture Blanc Pain. And that features 120 hours of power reserve and it still has a silicon hairspring solid gold rotor that's been blackened and you can see it all through the case back. And here you can really appreciate the finishing of this watch. This may be a dive watch, but it's still a high horology watch and it has that level of finishing to it. It's a great way to get into high horology without having to sacrifice the utility of a dive watch, the versatility of a dive watch. Now in terms of measurements, it is still a little bit bigger than the Submariner, 43.6 millimeters, but it is only 13.4 millimeters thick. So when you bear in mind it has a see-through case back, that's not bad for a 300 meter water resistant watch. And when it comes to price, yes, it is of course still more expensive than the Submariner's retail price or the price of 13,100 US. However, on the pre-owned market, you can get for as low as about 9,400 up to about 12,000, 12,500. So it holds its value a little bit better than the Glassute, but you can still get great value on the pre-owned market. And it also gives you an idea that you could even get this at retail with a little bit of a discount get the full warranty, have your name on the papers without having to really go the pre-owned route if you want to. And either way, it'll be cheaper than getting a pre-owned or gray market Submariner most likely. And you'll never see someone else with this watch on. One of the things I love about it is that it is a bathyscaphe on a bracelet. This is a model that's known for being on either canvas straps or NATOs. So seeing it on a bracelet, having it on a bracelet would be a really unique experience. You won't find someone else with it. You know, it's like finding someone with an Aquanaut on a bracelet or even a Panerai on a bracelet, like the one I reviewed a few weeks ago. There are some watches that are just known for having a certain format, be it only on a bracelet or only on a strap. So being able to find one of these unicorns is a great, great way if you're looking for something that's different from what everyone else is gonna have. And then next on the list, we're shrinking down the size back to 42 millimeters, a more traditional and easily wearable size, but only 11 millimeters thick, making it probably the thinnest 300 meter water resistant dive watch you can find we have the Cartier Calibre de Cartier Diver. Now this watch was recently discontinued or at least it's stopped showing up on Cartier's website as of February, 2020. So it's definitely gonna be a little bit harder to find, but it is an amazing example of a dive watch that's completely different to what we're used to seeing. The Submariner has laid the template for what we expect from a dive watch and the Calibre de Cartier Diver has said, fuck that, I wanna be different, I wanna stand out. And it does. Of course, it's still made in steel. The bezel is ADLC, which is amorphous diamond-like carbon, essentially another almost impervious uh, material that they use for the bezel. It's got great, great loom, but what really stands out about this watch is just that dial. You know, you think that you know what a dive watch looks like, then you see one of these. It's got Roman numerals in the top half. Of course, that's typical of Cartier. Then all along the bottom, you've got regular indices. You've got a small seconds indicator. All of that is loomed, by the way. And for the date, they've done something really cool where the aperture will show you three days. And obviously your date is in the middle. So when the seconds hand is over at the three o'clock, by process of elimination, you can still see what the date is. On the inside, we have the caliber 1904-PS, PS for petite seconde, which is small seconds in French. It does have only 48 hours of power reserve, but it does have two barrels. So it uses those, instead of extending the power reserve, like on the Blanc Pan, it uses those two barrels to make sure that it maintains a consistent precision over the course of that power reserve. Most single barrel watches will be less precise and less accurate closer towards the tail end of their power reserve versus when they're fully wound. So this sort of mitigates that. And if you think about it, if it's a watch that you're gonna be wearing every day, which any of these you easily could, you don't need a crazy six or five day power reserve for an automatic watch because you'll just charge it as you walk. In any case, this at its last known retail price on the bracelet in 2019 was 8,550 US, so a little bit cheaper than what the Submariner is at retail. But on the pre-owned market, you can pick it up for as low as 5,200 US, up to about 9,000. I'm guessing those upper cap ones are the people who have realized this is a discontinued model, so maybe they think there might be a bit more demand, 
But either way, whichever way you cut it along that range, you're saving money on the Submariner and you're getting a truly unique watch. Now, of these three watches, my pick personally would probably be the Cartier. I am a little bit biased. I own its predecessor, the Pasha Sea Timer. But even so, all three of these watches are amazing watches and they're something different than a Submariner. They'll probably be more fun than a Submariner and start more conversations. And if you wanna save some money on that pre-owned price, you can get all of these for less than the gray market value of a Submariner. And in the case of the Cartier, less than the retail of the Submariner. So let me know in the comments below which of these three was your favorite and what other sort of left field Submariner alternatives come to mind when you think of the budget that you can afford if you're trying to get a gray market Submariner. And if you like this video, please do like it and share it. Make sure you follow me on Instagram at Shaluso. And of course, if you want to keep seeing new watch videos, make sure you subscribe to Shaluso as well. In any case, thanks for watching this video and we'll catch you on the next one.